Okay, hello YouTube. This is Marauders here. So today we're going to be talking about containers. We're going to, have to do a quick introduction about containers by installing WSL2 and Docker Desktop. So in case you didn't know, containers are a fantastic new concept of deploying applications. And uh, it's really neat. You really should. It's what everyone seems to be going for so you should really be trying it out okay so what are containers as on a very summary point of view containers are basically like virtual machines but not really so when you have a virtual machine your a virtual machine is an entire snapshot of an os so you have your os components as well as your app or server components running on it okay so even if you didn't need it, your your all your kernel drivers and everything, they are all loaded in when you have a virtual machine. So you can see that a virtual machine would most likely take up a lot of your system component stored memory store. So if this is your actual PC, that's what happens. It will just take up a lot of memory and a lot of resources on it. Okay? So What's the difference between that and a container? Well, when you actually run a container, the container actually it shares the OS level components with the hosting OS. So it's you actually just you, on a system resource wise, you are actually just running the application. It's like running the application on an on another OS on its own OS. So. It's going to be smaller to deploy and the actual resource consumption is going to be much much lesser than a virtual machine on in some factors i you can i feel that it's kind of like when you rdp into another windows server as another user and just run an application from there okay so that's a very mile high explanation of containers you just look up on the internet on exactly what containers are okay so to start off we are going to install windows subsystem for linux 2.0 inside our windows and if you're wondering why should we need to use linux when we can have containers windows containers as well because remember as i mentioned a container uses the host resources unlike a virtual machine. So if you're going to deploy to a Linux container host, you're going to need to build the container from Linux. Okay? Personally, I feel that Windows container hosting isn't as uh, matured and full-featured as Linux container hosting. So that's why I would rather not use a uh, Windows contain container hosting. And of course, Remember all the newfangled technologies like .NET Core, of the, I'm sorry, .NET 5 and .NET 6, and of course Node.js, a lot of things that you use are basically, it's better to just run them from Linux anyway. So, and of course, the most important part about running, why you should run containers in Linux is of course, Linux container hosting is basically just cheaper and that's kind of the most important thing ever, right? Okay, so let's just get started on installing WSL2 now. So the first thing, there are two ways to actually install WSL2. There is the easy way and the hard way. So to see if you can use the easy way, you just check your Windows version. And okay, according to my notes here, you need to have Windows 10 built. 19041 and higher to do it the easy way to do it the hard way well check the link in the description below where you can get to the manual installation steps okay the other thing you need to do is you need to remember to turn on the hyper-v extensions for your processor uh let's see now intel is called hyper-v what wait what, what's the amd called again what's the amd analogy for hyper-v hang on 
Okay, I, I think I got it now. Um, in your buy in your system BIOS, the Intel one should be something like Intel Hyper V or VT or whatever that says virtualization technology in your BIOS settings. Okay, it's a confusing thing, and I really don't know why they don't have a standardized name for it. And for AMD's AMD processors, it's going to be called AMD V or SVM. Okay, so you need to turn the one your you need to enable your your bio your virtualization settings in your BIOS first before you can even continue on this. Okay. Okay, so one thing I do want to point out is that if you're feeling skittish and you already have a Hyper V Hyper V uh, virtual machine set up in your Windows, you can test this under Hyper V or but. The first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that your virtual machine is set up for nested virtualizations. How do you do that? You need to run uh, in PowerShell. You need to first get an information about your virtual machine. So, oops, uh, the command is get VM processor dash VM name. So my VM name is containers demo. Okay, containers demo, and then uh, fl star, and I didn't put a space there. Okay, so you have a whole list of things, and the most important thing you want to see is this one: expose virtualization extensions. Okay, so mine is already set to true because I've already turned it on. So what you have to do is. You have to go set VM processor dash VM name VM name containers demo dash expose expose virtualization extensions dollar true. Okay, I don't know why it needs to be a dollar true, but I guess that's because it's a variable name and I'm not, I don't use PowerShell, so don't ask me why for the specific reasons. Okay, uh, and this needs to be set when your virtual machine is actually off. So just turn it off, set the day and turn it back on again. And yeah, once that is done, restart our virtual machine and it should have virtualization ready and we can actually start installing WSL2 now. Okay, so let's finally get down to installing WSL. So first of all, you're going to need an elevated prompt. So this can be a command prompt or, or PowerShell. Just remember, it needs to be elevated to allow administrator access. So then we're going to type WSL-L-O. So this will list out the, the Linux distributions that are available that we can install. And... Uh, Personally, I have no idea which is better or worse. I I heard of some of these, but I am personally only really familiar with Ubuntu. So, uh, and of course, <laughs> I personally only use Ubuntu before. So, <laughs> maybe it might work for the others. I'm not too sure. But anyway, pick the Linux dist distro that you want. I'm going to use this... Uh, 20.04 Ubuntu uh, LTS version. So Ubuntu 20.04. As it already has helpfully told us, just type WSL install d distro. Okay, here we go. Install. So it's going to go do its thing. So if you didn't enable Hyper-V, it will complain at this time that you don't have Hyper-V installed. Okay, it's downloading and uploading the kernels. We just let it do what it needs to do. Okay, so now it's done. We're going to restart the system. So in any case, when you... When you first restart the system after you install WSL, this thing will pop up and it will say it is installing the... I think at this point, this is actually downloading and unpacking the actual system image. So yeah, this is going to take a while.
it might look like it's not doing anything, but yeah, it, it's gonna take a while. Okay, finally, I, th I think it took about yeah, three to four minutes. Okay, so now it's gonna ask you to create a user account name. So try to remember this because you're going to need to use this every now and then. So sysadmin, and this will also be the the administrator password that you use to sudo out okay so just use something that you remember like pa dollar dollar w0 id the default lead password uh oh dear i didn't have the same one okay pa okay so just remember to do that, okay? So you you need to remember the password so that you can actually log in and install stuff if you have to, okay? So yep, great. Uh, now uh, we have Linux in our Windows, so WSL two is installed. And here's a helpful piece of advice. So now that we have uh we have Linux running in our Windows, you might be wondering, okay? Uh, if you're not familiar with the Linux commands, now is a good time for you to go get some refresher course on the Linux command prompt commands. But uh, there is one thing that, for example, if you need to access your Windows files from Linux, you go into the slash MMT folder and you see that these are the, there will be some directories which is basically the directories of your drive so this will directly go into your windows system now one thing is that when when the when you're trying to access windows files from linux there is some form of a performance penalty so if you're actually trying to run code or everything don't run it off the, your windows drives okay run it off the wsl drive itself now in order to do the reverse, which is from Windows, you want to access your your Linux drives, just go to Explorer and type whack whack WSL dollar symbol. And you see the installation of your Ubuntu. And for example, just now in the main home directory, which is the tau directory, this is actually user slash and oh no i'm sorry home slash sysadmin okay so this is the this is the folder the the user root folder in linux okay i don't use linux that much so that's pretty much what i usually know but basically that's how you can access the files from linux from windows and in windows from linux okay now let's head on to the important stuff which is to install docker so the next thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna install docker desktop okay so just come to the docker.com website and say you want to download docker desktop and uh one thing to remember is that docker isn't the only way to make containers but uh it is the only way that i know how to do it and this is the fastest way that I know how to do it, okay? Their, their docker isn't the only way to do containers, okay? So we're going to say download for Windows and it will, we will end up with the installer here. So I'm just going to double click and start it. okay so the most important thing when you're installing it is that this needs to be turned on okay so if you don't turn this on this will it's going to do the old uh linux virtual machine way of running or it might be set up to use windows containers which we don't want okay the whole reason we, we are doing this we did the setup for WSL is that we want this more advanced integration. Okay, so remember, this must be checked.
Okay, so now it's said that the installation is complete and we need to log out of Windows and log back in again. This is probably not gonna be fun because I'm in a VM. Mm. Okay, so we can see that it is now Docker is attempting to start up because this is the whale icon. Let's just open that. Yes, this is the uh, the new new terms and service agreement. So when this starts up, remember that this is just a GUI into the main Docker service component, which is actually running in in Linux, in the WSL heart. Yep, we're going to skip the tutorial. Okay, so we're actually going to run this. We'll copy here and uh, we're going to run our Linux terminal. So we're just going to say Windows R WSL. And this will run into our Linux terminal. And uh, let's just hit into our home directory. I'm going to copy this command and run it okay so a quick explanation of what this command is going to do it is basically going to say we're going to run this image as a container and we're going to detach from this process and we're going to publish out the port 80 of the container to port 80 of the local machine uh don't worry too much about the terminology the simple thing is we are going to run this application and publish it to our local TCP port 80. So, okay, it's already running. And we can see now control panel here, the running container, there's this thing here that is running as a container right now. And I can just browse to it. HTTP localhost because it's running at port 80. And boom. Okay. So this is now running in the container. Great. So now our our container environment is set up and we can start doing the other cool stuff. But first of all, what I do recommend you to do now is that you might want to go and read up on how to use containers in Docker and uh, read up on some sim basic networking knowledge like about your TCP ports and other things and uh, we'll come back with the next video on where we are actually going to create our own containers and run create our own containers from our actual code and run them ourselves <laughs>